Now it's time for Culture Talk, where we talk about culturally relevant topics you can use to start conversations about your faith. I'm joined today with biochemist Fuzzle Rana. Thank you, Fuzz, for joining us. I'm glad to be here. You know, there's nothing more culturally relevant today than COVID-19, so we're going to be talking about that. Yeah, unfortunately, that's, <laughs> I know. that's true. Well, you know, a common um, concern that people have, particularly those who are against abortion, is that the COVID-19 vaccines contain fetal cells. Um, so before we dive into um, really what the vaccines are and what they do, you're going to be speaking, first of all, as a, a biochemist, so from your area of expertise, you're going to be talking about these vaccines. The big, big question I need to ask first is, do these vaccines contain fetal cells? Uh, the short answer is no. I mean, right. there are no fetal cells in the vaccines. Fetal cells are not used to uh, to test the vaccines, mm -hmm. to develop them, or to produce the vaccines. Uh, they, they, there are no abortions that are being carried out in order to provide the cells mm -hmm. needed to, again, produce or to uh, confirmatory test the vaccines. So the fetal cells are not in the vaccines and abortions are not needing to continue to happen in order to create more and more vaccines, correct? That's exactly right. So one way to think about this mm -hmm. is that if you uh, refuse a vaccine because you're concerned about this issue, mm -hmm. uh, you are not preventing a single abortion right. from happening. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there aren't any fetal cells in the vaccines, but where did the concern come from? It must have stemmed from something right. and fetal something had happened to come up in the conversation. Yeah. So where does it come from? Yeah, well, uh, in order to, again, develop and test and then it produce at least the 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 J and J vaccine. Uh -huh. You do need to have a source of human cells, mm -hmm. and the cells that are used are called immortalized cells. Mm -hmm. These are cell lines that are created from existing human cells, but they're modified in such a way to give them certain properties that make them useful. In this case, for vaccine development, testing, and production. Mm -hmm. And the, the cells, cell line it, that everybody's talking about is HEK293. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, the cell line was actually derived from uh, kidney cells taken from a fetus that resulted from an abortion. Mm. But this was a single abortion that took place in the early 1970s in the Netherlands. And again, those cells were harvested from that uh, fetus mm -hmm. and then used to create these cell lines. So the cell lines that are used are derived from fetal cells, but they are technically not fetal cells. But you had mentioned immortalized, so does that mean then that those same fetal cell lines are what are continuing to be used today? Yeah, because the cells are immortalized, mm -hmm. it means that you can grow them up and then uh, clone them and create another uh, culture and mm -hmm. uh, repeat that process over and over and over and mm -hmm. over again. And so what you're looking at now are cells that are uh, remotely, <laughs> you know, connected to that, the fetal cells that were mm -hmm. used again to create the cell lines. Right. Um, but it, again, it points to the fact that we're not avoiding, uh, preventing a single abortion from happening because right. it's, the one has already happened. Right. Um, but are those fetal cell lines in the vaccines or were they used to develop the vaccine? They're, 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 not, not, in, they're not in the vaccine. So there's okay. no human cells in, in any of the, the COVID-19 vaccines right. at all. Okay, that's very helpful to know because I think there's a misconception there that there are fetal cells in the vaccine and they're right. being injected into, into right. other people. Um, so now I wanna get to this, this other area of just talking about for those who are against abortion, if these vaccines aren't resulting in further abortions, then would taking the COVID vaccine be one way of demonstrating one's value of human life? Yeah, well, you know, the, the, the ethical issues surrounding the, the COVID-19 vaccines mm -hmm. are still rather complex and significant mm -hmm. uh, because some people are, you know, really troubled by the idea that the cells that were used to to develop and test and then produce at least the J&J &J vaccine, mm -hmm. are, again, were derived ultimately from fetal cells. And so in a, a paper that I wrote with uh, George Haraxon, who's an ethicist, we really wrestle through the, the complex ethical issues that are, mm -hmm. arise out of that. But one of the, the factors that we need to consider is the fact that 
these vaccines actually help prevent the transmission of COVID-19 to other people. Mm -hmm. And that actually affords p protection that saves lives. Mm -hmm. These vaccines save lives, not just our lives, but the lives of people around us. Right. And so this is something that counterbalances, uh, you know, concerns about the cells being derived from uh, a single abortion. Mm -hmm. And so it, there's competing uh, interest really that from a pro-life perspective. I think you and George do a really good job in this white paper or an academic article, if you will. You do a good job of, of kind of unpacking that there, this can be redeemed, even this can be redeemed. Can you explain that a little bit? Sure, I think everybody that holds to a pro-life position would agree that the initial an original abortion was immoral, mm -hmm. right? And then what happens to those cells after the abortion really serves as the, the point of contention, you know, and is it you know, ethically permissible or not to work with those cells? Uh, but the thing that I, is really to me the most important point perhaps is this idea that even out of acts of evil, good can result. Mm -hmm. And this of course is a Christian principle is that God can redeem even evil in the world and turn that which was intended for evil for good. And so I see these vaccines that are being developed from the cell line actually as being, you know, part of that, that redemptive, you know, uh, that redemption that, that God offers. Yeah. Well, this is a very heavy topic and there's plenty more to say. So if you would like to dive into the white paper that Fuzzle Rana and George Traxon have written, visit reasons.org slash white paper.